Vertical noise could be throwing off all of your measurements without you even knowing it. Understanding what noise is coming from your device versus what is coming from your oscilloscope is critical if you want a fully functional device. Hi, I'm Erin, and in this episode of Exposing Signal Integrity Myths, we're going to focus on vertical noise. This pesky noise is unfixable, which can really mess with your head and your measurements. It can mean the difference between a happy customer and a very angry one. Even though vertical noise is technically not fixable, it's possible to measure around it. Understanding exactly where different components of vertical noise come from is extremely important in a successful design and verification especially when you're making low-level measurements. This will allow you to appropriately eliminate that noise as much as possible to ensure you have an even more accurate design and a happy customer. Vertical noise is often overlooked, but it can cause significant problems like amplitude measurement errors, waveform reconstruction uncertainty, timing errors and jitter, and undesirably fat waveforms. So first things first, what is this noise and where is it coming from? Well, some of it's actually coming from the oscilloscope and probe that you need to use to measure your signal. You'll see this on every scope from every vendor. It's unavoidable and it's called random noise. It comes from the technology that's used in the scope's front end, the attenuator and the amplifier. The noise at the instrument's most sensitive volts per division setting is known as the baseline noise, and it's a good approximation of how much noise is introduced by that technology. The amount of random noise present is also relative to the specific time-based setting you're using. And even though a waveform might appear to have less noise at a higher volts per division setting, there's actually significantly more noise than if you were at a more sensitive volts per division setting. And this is simply because you've optimized the ADC to look at a larger voltage range with more sample data to be captured. This type of noise is unbounded, which means the more captures you collect, the more noise you'll see on your signal. If you were to capture your signal for an infinitely long period, you'd theoretically have an infinitely large peak-to-peak -peak value. Because of this, vertical noise and random jitter should be measured as an RMS value. The RMS value is the continuous value of the signal, rather than the varying peak-to-peak -peak measurement, which will grow over time. Also, an important thing to remember, the higher the bandwidth, the higher the noise. If you think about it, it makes sense that you're letting in more noise with more bandwidth because noise is distributed across all frequencies. By increasing bandwidth, you're able to capture the higher frequency noise. So I've talked about where noise comes from on the oscilloscope, but you also have to think about the noise that comes from your probe. To understand the relationship between probe attenuation ratio and noise, let's take a step back. If you have a 10 to 1 probe, your signal is being divided by 10 in order to fit into the scope's ADC. However, you obviously want to view the true signal's values on screen, not your signal divided by 10. Too much unnecessary math. So before the signal's displayed on screen, it's actually multiplied by a factor of 10 in order to display at the proper values. Well, when that signal's attenuated, or divided by 10, the noise is not necessarily attenuated at the same amount because there's some noise being added in through that process. This means the signal to noise ratio goes up significantly at that point. So when that signal is multiplied by 10 in order to display correctly on the screen, the noise induced by the scope is also multiplied by 10, causing even more noise to display on the screen. And this will obviously just continue to get worse and worse with the higher attenuation ratios you use because you'll be multiplying more and more. The moral of the story here is always use the lowest attenuation ratio possible in an effort to introduce less noise into the system. You can see what a big difference it makes here by looking at the baseline noise of each of these probes. To do this, you simply hook them up and connect the ground lead to the probe tip. One other thing to keep in mind is the position of your signal on the oscilloscope screen. It's a little known fact that the noise that rides on your signal on the center of the screen is smaller than the noise that you would see when it is on the top or the bottom of the screen. 
And this will happen on all oscilloscopes, and it has to do with the amount of quantization levels that are needed in the ADC when you use more of the screen. Typically, this is a pretty negligible amount, but some scopes can have it so bad that it actually affects the measurements that you're making. You have to be sure to check this out because proper practice is to scale your signal across the entire screen. But if there are parts of the screen where excess noise is introduced, this may cause for faulty measurements. I won't dive too much further into this topic because I really just want you to know that it exists for right now, but if you want to understand that some more, you can check out this ADC blog that I've linked on the screen and in the description. Now that you know where that random noise is coming from, it's time to learn about how you can go about eliminating it from your measurements. And the solution is really pretty simple and easy to perform. You don't even need to connect a device. You just connect your probe and hook up the probe tip to the ground clip like we did earlier. The industry standard sensitivity for measuring noise floor is 50 millivolts per division, but the noise floor could change at different sensitivities, so be sure to check at the sensitivity and bandwidth you'll actually need. Now if you just set up an AC RMS measurement on the baseline noise waveform, that value you get is the noise being caused by the measurement system. So now you can probe on your device and get your signal on screen and perform another AC RMS measurement on it. Subtract that value from the first noise measurement that you got and voila, you've accounted for the noise being caused by your system. However, don't forget you will probably also be seeing both random and deterministic noise from your actual device. Another quick note about making measurements on a noisy waveform is to play around with the waveform intensity level if your scope allows you to do that. This can give you a very quick view of your true signal by graying out some of that less frequent noise. Now you know how to determine various sources of noise and how to measure around those to get the accurate results you need. The biggest problem with this is that there are many engineers that don't even know that system noise exists. If you don't know it exists, you'll never question it and you'll continue making faulty measurements your whole life. Be sure to always analyze the scope's vertical noise by performing the self-tests you learned here. But remember, when you compare vertical noise on various oscilloscopes, it's important to be at the same sensitivity and same bandwidth on each scope. But be careful, sometimes the scope bandwidth can automatically be reduced at the lowest time sensitivity. Be sure to pay attention to what your scope's bandwidth is at at each time-based setting. To wrap up everything you learned here today, use the lowest bandwidth possible to avoid high frequency noise. Try to go with the lowest probe attenuation ratio in order to introduce the least amount of noise. Scale your signal across the entire scope screen, not just the top or just the bottom. And always test for random vertical noise. Vertical noise is just one of the several important specifications in achieving the highest accuracy and in signal integrity. Learn about the other critical specs that come into play here at the link you see on screen or in the description. How has vertical noise affected your measurements? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for joining today. Be sure to ask any questions you have below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with what we're doing on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to check out that blog I mentioned earlier around how the ADC works.